Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another episode of You Need a Miracle. I'm Jenna Taylor, and I have some wonderful stories to tell you today to build your faith. Uh, before we begin, I do want to read a story out of the Bible. Um, it's one that really has a head scratcher for me, has been for years. Um, and I just, I, you're familiar with it, I'm sure, but we're going to read it together. So it's in Luke 6.6, 6, if you want to look that up. Um, and this is what the story is about. It says, And it came about on another Sabbath that he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And there was a man there whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and the Pharisees were watching him closely to see if he healed on the Sabbath in order that they might find a reason to accuse him. But he knew what they were thinking, and he said to the man with the withered hand, Rise and come forward. And he rose and came forward. And Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save a life or to destroy it? And after looking around at them all, he said to him, Stretch out your hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored. But they themselves were filled with rage and discussed together what they might do to Jesus. Initially, um, you read this story, and, and you, it's, a, it's incredible. It's an incredible story. But the thing at the end, when they were enraged because he healed someone, that's just demented. That's just sick. And so it just shows you what mindset the scribes were in at that time. It was just incredible. But he was healed. And uh, the reason I think this story kind of has an effect on me is because in school, uh, I had a schoolmate that actually had a withered hand. And I thought all the time, I, I wonder if he could be healed. I wonder if, you know, if, and Jesus did it, but can it be done today? And of course, now we see miracles all the time at the mission and Walmart and gas station and, you know, toot and totem. Ever, it's just one of those things. And so, oh, I'd love to find that guy and pray for him. But at any rate, I'll tell you a wonderful story. Um, my sister uh, was the firstborn. And when she was born, she had a, a disability. The, the, the hand did not form. Uh, her right hand did not form. And so she just had a bit of a palm with a little... It, it was just nothing, you know, and so, of course, my parents were devastated, but, you know, they took her to several doctors, and they found a doctor who told them this, I can either give her a hand, it won't work, but it'll look like a hand, or I can make her hand do surgery on her, what her hand is now, and make it where I, she has an appendage, and that she can then function, at least, with this hand, and so my parents opted that she'd function, that they thought that, that was the best thing to do. And of course they really, you know, raced her. They wanted her to feel normal. So they didn't coddle her. They made her tie her shoes before all the other children. You know, it's just one of those things. And so as she went to this private uh, Catholic girls school and uh, excelled exceedingly, she was so smart and had so much ambition, real overachiever and um, went on to apply to go to nursing school and to college. And they said, you can't enter the nursing uh, program because of your hand. And she said, you show me something I can't do and then I will accept that. But I, you throw anything at me and I can do it. I can function. And sure enough, they did throw it and she caught it and she did it all and they let her in nursing school, which I was so excited. She went on after she graduated to get her master's in oncology and then to get another master's in gerontology. And so just a brilliant woman, giving, loving, kind, just the best sister in the world. I just love her to death. Well, at any rate, um, after the thing that's wonderful about having a sister who's an RN is that she, anytime any of us had surgery or whatever, she would come and take care of us. And so even me, uh, when I went to MD Anderson, came back, she stayed for three weeks and took care of me and the tubes and the this and the who and the what and, you know, oh, wow, just a, a saint on the earth. We all taught, said, you're the, you're the saint of the family and loved her so much. Well, not long ago, she actually had to have back surgery, and they lived in Prescott, Arizona. And uh, so there was nothing big. It was garden variety back surgery. And so at, when she woke up, whatever had happened during the surgery, she 
was paralyzed in her left leg and foot. She couldn't move it. She couldn't stand on it. She she was devastated. She was absolutely devastated with this. And they raced her back to surgery to try again, and it didn't work. And so she called me for the first time ever. She called me and said, I need you. And I said, I'm coming. I will come. Well, it was right, I think it was like the day after Christmas. I'm not sure, two days, at any rate, or maybe New Year's, but it was the holidays. And a ticket to Prescott, to, well, Phoenix, and then to Prescott uh, on the plane would get me to Italy any other time of the year. So I said, okay, I'm just going to drive. And so I, it's a two-day trip, but I, I drove to Albuquerque, spent the night, and uh, then started out the next day. And my husband called me. I'm in the car. and He called. He said, you're about to run into a snowstorm. And I'm looking at the radar, and so be careful. And uh, I said, okay. And, of course, I was in a large SUV, four-wheel drive. I felt confident, you know. But at any rate, that snowstorm turned into a blizzard, and then it turned into a whiteout. And I couldn't see anything but two taillights in front of me. I could not see anything except for you could see the shadows of there was a, an 18 wheeler that had been turned over on the side in the median and then another car turned upside down over here off this way and there were people sliding off and and i thought oh lord jesus help me get through this i've got to get to my sister and there were my husband would call he goes i think you better turn back i said i can't i can't she has never asked me for anything and i'm going to be there and so and i'm going to pray for her and so he said, okay, just be careful. And he talked me through, you know, and it took eight hours to get through that storm. And finally got to Flagstaff and the storm ab abated a little bit. And then I ran into a forest fire. So then I couldn't see because of the smoke. I thought, this is a disaster, but I'm going to get there if it hair lips the governor. And so finally that night I got there exhausted, checked into my hotel and I just wanted to see her. So I drove on over to the hospital and uh, hugged her neck and loved on her a little bit and, and uh, I brought surprises for her, of course. And so I said, I'll see you in the morning. So the next morning, I had a long, quiet time with the Lord. I said, I want my sister healed. And I know you can do that. I know you can. And so armed with my book, Signs and Wonders 101, I went to her, to her room and I just began reading glory stories, all the miracles that I've seen and all the blind eyes open and the lame walk and all of that. I just read story to build her faith and read stories. And so uh, finally I said, okay, you're Mike, her husband. I said, we're going to pray for you right now. So we laid her on the bed on her back and um, we snaked our hand up underneath the small of her back where the, the surgical site was. And we just began praying healing. And I am telling you, Holy Spirit hit that hospital room. Oh my gosh. We were, it was thick. I'm telling you, it, it was so strong. And we were, you could just feel it was that practicing presence kind of feeling. This is the waterfall of glory falling on my sister and me and Mike, and it was amazing. And um, so then we, and oh, and so when I was, had my hand up under there, I started feeling sinew move. I felt it and I thought, oh, I said, Kaya, you're getting healed right now. I can tell. And so at any rate, we said, we're going to, we were exhausted after that. So we said, you take a nap. And so as we walked out of the room, she said, I'm floating. I'm literally floating. And so it was just so great to feel that wonderful unction of the Holy Spirit. And um, so that night, Mike called me and said, you are not going to believe this. She's walking everywhere. She's walking all over the place with a walker, but fast. And she doesn't have a brace on or anything. And I could not wait till the next day. I was so exhausted. But anyway, I went the next day and sure enough, she was walking without the walker. She walked fine. She was completely healed in that hospital. So they let her go because <laughs> she didn't need rehab anymore. So she actually got to get out. I just love that story about God just healing my sister just because and I was so glad that I could go. You know, I have to tell you, I think you'll enjoy this story. The very first healing that ever happened at Faith City Mission actually happened at the hand of my husband. And so there was this time when our church would, uh, our healing teams from church would go to the mission um, and pray, meet in chapel and anyone who needed prayer and they'd pray for people all the time, you know. So, you know, one of the guys would give a word and read in the Bible to build their faith and then they'd come forward and pray. Well, 
So he read a story and then they all came forward and my husband's over here on the far left and um, no one came to him, but the fellow that was sitting on the first row in front of him actually only had one shoe on and the other foot was huge and swollen and like toes were uh, sticky out of and anyway they were it was purple and it was diseased and and my husband said what happened to your foot and he said i don't know he said it's some kind of disease i can't nothing can touch it i can't stand i can't even touch it to the floor i can't have a sheet on it i can't have a sock on it. i sure can't have a shoe on it and my crutches are killing me i've been on them for six months now and i don't know what to do and uh, Jay said, well, you know what? I, I believe God gave me a, a scripture for you. Um, and it's the one that says, truly, I say to you, if you speak to this mountain and command it to be cast into the sea and doubt and not doubt in your heart, it shall be done. And Jay said, I think the Lord wants you to speak to your foot and so uh, and speak to that disease. And so the gentleman stood up on his crutches and he said, I, I speak, I command this mountain to be cast into the sea. And so Jay and this gentleman named Jerry were watching his foot. And before their very eyes, they watched the swelling go down. They watched the purple disappear and the foot turn pink. It was completely down to size, normal, complete. Uh, Jay said he's never been so shocked in his life. He's, we couldn't believe it. And so... Uh, Jay said, well, uh, how's your, how are your armpits is, uh, you, where the crutches hurt? He goes, it doesn't hurt anymore. He said, well, is there anything else? We're on a roll. So if there's anything else you want prayer for, he said, well, I can't see. I can't see anything. He said, I'm half blind and I don't have any glasses and I can't read my Bible. I'm so frustrated. And so um, Jay laid his hands on his eyes and prayed for him. And he said, go up to that pulpit and try to read that Bible. And he could read it. He was so excited. So he, then he started stomping his foot. And he goes, oh my gosh. And Jay's like, be careful, be careful. But the guy stomped his foot. He said, I'm healed, I'm healed. He started running around the chapel like crazy. Then he ran into the dining room where the guys were watching television. And, and he showed them that he could do it. And they said, you need a new pair of shoes, buddy. So that somebody went back to sorting and got him a pair of shoes. And I tell you what, that man, you could not, for the next three months, you couldn't get within 50 feet of him, that he wasn't going to tell you what God did for him and in his body. He actually did read that Bible. He actually did lose all the pain in his um, arm, under his arms, and he actually could wear a shoe, and he was completely healed. It was amazing. That was the first, the absolute first. What happened? God restored, just like the withered hand, God restored Jerry. To what he was before i love that you know sometimes it's restoration in your body sometimes it's restoration in your spirit and sometimes it's restoration in your soul you know psalm 23 we all know it and i absolutely adore it and so in it when he talks about the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures and he leadeth me beside the still waters and he restores my soul listen there's a lot of times it's not a physical problem it's a soul problem. And so when people come to us with that, we just, you know, we want to help them. And I'll give you an example. Um, I got a call to, from my, in my office. They said, can you come up to the lobby? We really need your help. And I said, okay. And so I came up to the lobby and uh, instantly there was this foul, foul odor. And I don't mean unwashed hair or dirty bodies. I mean foul demonic foul and there was a gentleman sitting there and he was so his face was dark and horrible countenance and his eyes were like dull little pebbles they were just he was a what a dead man walking honestly he really was and um and he was crying and so i sat down beside him and i said honey, what's wrong? He said, oh, you've got to help me. You've got to help me. I'm being so tormented. I'm so tormented. And the demons are after me. And my and he was so afraid and he was gripped with this. He said, you have got to help me. I'm being tortured. And I said, well, okay, when did this start? He said, well, my sister put a curse on me. And so that's when it started. And I, she cursed me. And I said, okay, one, one quick question have you been dabbling in witchcraft? He said, yeah. He said, my whole family does, and we're in witchcraft. And I said, uh-huh. 
I said, okay, this is going to take a bit, but we're going to get this out. So you got to work with me. You have to be honest with me. And he said, okay, okay. And so um, we, of course, broke all the curses that were spoken over him. And um, I told him, you've been redeemed from the curse of the law, Christ being made a curse for you, for cursed is every man that hangs on the tree. So you've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Now we have the authority to command the demons of hell that are attached to that curse, torture, terror, tormenting, all that, to be gone and go to the dry places in Jesus' name. That give, gives us legal ground to do that. And so that's what we did right there. We just started casting out. I had him come out of agreement with, out of the whole witchcraft and the dabbling and the things. And, and he, I said, don't ever get involved with that again, honey. Don't do it. And as I prayed, that foul odor started to fade away. And then I noticed that his skin, the skin of his face, the countenance began to brighten. His eyes began to brighten. He began to brighten and he just became a new man. And he smiled, he had a dimple right here. He smiled and he was like, oh, I feel so much better. I feel so much better. Thank you, thank you. I said, no, don't go there again, buddy. Don't do it. Just, just stay where you are and keep the Holy Spirit is your friend at all times. But God restored him. Do you see that? Even though he sinned and he was naughty, he still restored him. And I love that. I think that's a great story. You know, there was a woman that came to us one day and she was, you know, she was well-dressed and beautifully coiffed and just a woman. And, and um, I said, what's the problem? And she said, I'm in torment. I'm in torment. So much has gone wrong with my body and um, completely just my digestive system and my hair's falling out and I'm, I'm the biggest mess. And I said, well, what's been going on? And she said, well, we've been betrayed. My husband and I were betrayed and, you know, by a loved one. And then there's these things that happened and it was all just falling apart around them. And she said, it has destroyed my health and I just need help. I am so tormented and I'm so angry and I'm so upset and I'm resentful of what was stolen from us. And so I said, okay, well, you know what? Um, if you want to be healed, then we're going to have to let go of all of that. You know, that's that, that Christian sin, you know? I don't smoke and I don't chew and I don't go with the dirt girls that do but I do throw a fit occasionally. And so that we don't get that, we don't get that right. We are not, we're not allowed to do that. Um, the reason is it opens the door to the demonic. And so it's not a matter of rules, it's a matter of life. And so um, we walked her through, you know, forgiving her loved ones that had betrayed her and her husband and then walking out in coming out of agreement with resentment and anger and bitterness and all those things that had just destroyed her body. And she had a real distended, you know, belly. And um, I said, okay, so now let's pray. Now we can pray. And so I began to lay my hand on her like this, on her belly. And I just began to pray God's healing touch on her. And as I prayed those scriptures, if the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the very dead lives on the inside of this woman, and I know that you do, you promised you would quicken her mortal body unto life. So we speak life over this digestive system in Jesus' name and over this belly. And as I prayed, I kid you not, you know how when air is being released from a balloon slowly, that's what her belly did. It just went, and it just kept getting small. I went, oh my gosh, it's happening. It's happening right now. And she goes, I feel it. I feel it. And so um, anyway, we hugged and we were so excited for her. And as she walked out, and she turned around and faced me and it was gone. I mean, that belly was gone. And I thought, oh Lord, you're so good. It, it, you know, it, it, we can't be offended. We just can't, you can be, but you will regret, you'll rue the day you did. And so I just, I thought that was a really good story. You know, um, there's a scripture in Jeremiah 30, 17 that says, I will restore you to health and heal you of your weakness. And so um, I have a story to tell. There was a guy that came uh, to the mission and uh, he was tormented as well. And he said, you have, he was well-dressed and, you know, he came to, um, the chapel before lunch and he said you have got to help me you have got to help me i've done everything i cannot cannot stay out of 
perversion. And he said, I know it's wrong. I know it's wrong. And I, I, I just can't let it go. The, you know, the movies, the films, the magazines, uh, the videos. He said, I, I, I just can't stay away. And I even evidently visiting a house of ill repute. And just, he said, I'm just gripped with it and I'm obsessed with it. And I said, well, tell me a little bit about your childhood. How, tell me what happened as a child. He said, oh, uncles, brothers abused me, sexually abused me. And um, I, I, at a very early age, and I've never been the same. And I said, you know what? God is the God of restoration, and He will restore you. He will. That's what He does best. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come out of agreement and pray for you, and let's see what God does, okay? So um, I had him begin to repent. You know, um, repentance is the start to everything that you need. Um, and so He's faithful and just to forgive us. When we sin, He is faithful and we, and we ask forgiveness. He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And so uh, we went through that whole process um, of repenting of each of those things that He had done. And, and He was embarrassed. I said, honey, don't be embarrassed. Just We got to get these demons out. So be honest. And He was painfully honest. But at any rate, He continued to walk through this and walk through this and then we began casting out those demons and I mean they were flying out it was just every um, sexual sin you know he just he they started coming out and and he met the poor little thing he manifested in so many ways and and yet I said don't worry about it honey we, they're coming out and that's this is just the way this demon does this spirit of lust he just throws up that's just all there is to it every time I've ever seen him and so um, we did we actually did get them all out and uh, he he's funny because he he also got lighter his his whole complexion got lighter he got lighter and he goes I feel empty I said well that that is common because the demons are gone now so it, it just feels different in your body when they're gone and you had so many so you are set free and God restored you so don't go back to your sin in Jesus' name, amen. And he said, okay, I won't, I promise. I'll tell you a great story. Oh, this is the best story. So I had, it was that time I'd just gotten back from uh, MD Anderson, and so uh, it was Christmas, and I was just wobbly to say the very best, but I wanted to be there for the Christmas festivities. And so what they did is they sat a chair over by the Christmas tree, sat me in it and said, don't get up. I said, okay, you don't have to worry about that. And so the speaker that day for the Christmas crowd was a man named, well, his nickname was Thor. He was a large, tall, muscular man. He had long, blonde, curly hair and blue eyes, and he looked like Thor. And he, he loved the poor and the homeless. And so he was great friends with them. And the, the chapel was packed out. And so he had his message in his pa papers and everything, and he had it all here. And he started to speak, and then he lost his place, and he couldn't find his papers. And, and it, anyway, he just, it, it was like he lost his way, and he couldn't, it was a mess. It was a disaster. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, this is our Christmas talk, and it's a disaster. And I thought, what? And I knew I couldn't do anything. I could barely sit in that chair. And so I was, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And it, it's just all falling apart. And then papers start falling on the floor. It was the, it was weird. It really was weird. And he was so frustrated. And he was making no sense at all. And finally, I, I was just at my wits end for him. And then finally he said, oh, what the heck? And he threw all the papers up in the air. He said, if you want to get saved, come up here. And I thought, that's the worst altar call ever. And so I'm watching. Nobody moved. In fact, all the oxygen just left the room and we all froze and nothing for a long time. And then all of a sudden, a young man in the very back ran forward and said, I want to get saved. And he ran up and then this one went up and this one ran up and these ran up and it just started filling up at the front. I, I was like, whoa, this is incredible. And there was a group of women that were over here about midway back and their clothing would 
make me believe that perhaps they were ladies of the evening. In other words, that was really inappropriately dressed to be in chapel, but it, we don't care. We want to, they're there. That's all we care about. But I, I thought, mm -hmm, yeah. Any rate, um, they all went forward. They all went forward. They, I was packed up there. There were 37 salvations that day. I just went, Lord, I'll never question you again because it doesn't matter, really, does it? Because it's the Holy Spirit that does it anyway. And all those people were restored. Is that amazing? They were reconciled back to the Father. I, I just love that story. It's incredible. There's another story about um, a young man who um, came to get clean and sober. And he was 19 years old. He was a young man. <clears throat> and so I, I actually had group that day, and we were talking, and I said, Define for me your definition of home, family and home. And um, this kid, Cody, uh, said, I have no idea what a home is. I have no idea what a family is because I've been in foster homes my entire life. I've never known my parents. I'm in foster. I've been gone. I've been shifted from one to another to one to another. I have no family and I have no home. And the guy next to him put his arm around him and said, Hey, it's okay. We're your family. We're your family. And this is your home. This is our home for now. And we're here. And, and we're going to be family. And uh, interestingly enough, that 19-year-old went on to graduate. And the guy that had put his arm around him stayed in touch with him. And he went to another state. He actually went to police academy. He became a police officer. He changed his whole life around and they stayed best friends and we got to keep up with him. And that's restoration. That is giving an orphan a place of his very own. How incredible is that? Absolutely incredible. You know, I believe there's somebody here and I, I see this of you, you're a writer. And I see on this book, the front of the book, um, it's an embossed, like a, journal and it is a pen and a, and a quill a quill i'm sorry and an ink uh, bottle and i believe that you've got there's somebody out there and you have that that is your journal and the lord said pen of the ready writer buddy pen of the ready writer it's for a male i'm talking to a male this is the pen of the ready writer and you're going to write and i'm going to give you what to say amen whoever that is go for it right in jesus name well I am so glad that you came today. And if you want to hear more stories like you heard today, just stop by uh, the mission, Faith City Mission, and, and pick the, up a copy of this. Or if you want to, go to Amazon.com and you can order it off of there. And then you will get and expect your own miracle. Amen. Thanks for sharing. Bye.